Welcome to Lesson 9D, Stokes' First Problem, Part 2. In this lesson, we continue our similarity solution example called Stokes' First Problem. Here we'll transform the momentum equation from a PDE to an ODE, and we'll also deal with the boundary conditions. Here's a quick review of the setup of the problem. We have an impulsively started wall, and we listed these eight assumptions and approximations. In a previous lesson, we simplified continuity and momentum equations and found that V was zero everywhere, pressure was simply hydrostatic pressure, and our X component of Navier-Stokes reduced to these two terms. And we have these three boundary conditions in what we'll call physical variables. In our previous lesson, we defined similarity variables. Eta is Y over delta, where delta is a thickness of the profile, and capital F is little u over capital U. The dependent similarity variable is a function of the independent similarity variable only. Now let's plug these similarity variables into this PDE. First, let's write out U in terms of capital F and speed capital U. And I'll write F as a function of eta to help us with our algebra. The left-hand side has del U del T, which we write as U F prime of eta del eta del T. But eta is Y over delta of T. So del eta del T is negative Y over delta squared times D delta DT since delta is a function only of time, but eta is a function of both y and time. Plugging this into here, we get del u del t is minus u, f prime of eta, and recognizing y over one of these deltas as eta itself, eta over delta, d delta dt. This becomes the left-hand side of our equation. Now consider the right-hand side, New del squared u del y squared will equal new, and then we take the y derivative of u, which gives us u del squared del y squared of f of eta equals new u del del y of f prime of eta del eta del y, where I've taken the first derivative, and from here, del eta del y is simply 1 over delta. So this becomes new u del del y of 1 over delta f prime of eta. By the way, when we do these kinds of derivatives, we're employing the chain rule. So this term becomes nu del squared u del y squared equal nu u, 1 over delta squared, since we're taking another derivative with respect to y and using the chain rule, times f double prime of eta. We'll substitute this now into our equation. Finally, we can transform our original equation in physical variables into similarity variables. We reduce the left-hand side to minus u f prime of eta, eta over delta, d delta dt, and the right side to nu u over delta squared, f double prime of eta. A little bit of algebra and rearranging gives negative delta over nu d delta dt, eta f prime of eta, equal f double prime of eta. I'll call this equation 2. Have we succeeded in rewriting our equation into similarity variables? Well, not quite yet. We still have time in our equation. Remember that the goal of similarity is to combine y and t into one similarity variable so that this differential equation, which is a PDE, becomes an ODE with eta as the only independent variable. In other words, y and t cannot appear explicitly in our differential equation. So what can we do? Well, let's try separating variables. All the terms with deltas and t's on the left side, and all the terms with eta and capital F on the right side, remembering that delta is a function of time and f is a function of eta. So the left-hand side is a function of time only, and the right-hand side is a function of eta only, and eta itself is a function of y and time. So imagine a scenario where we keep t fixed, but we change y. Changing y changes eta, and therefore changes the right side. But since the left side does not depend on y, it would not change the left side. Well, this is impossible unless both sides of this equation must equal a constant. And since they're equal, they must furthermore be the same constant. Thus, we can split this up into two equations, delta over nu, d delta dt equals some constant, I'll call it c, and negative f prime, where I just realized I forgot to write my negative sign, 
So my second equation is negative f double prime over eta f prime equals that same constant c. Now we need to solve both of these equations. Let's work on this left one first. We separate variables to get delta d delta equals c nu dt, which we can easily integrate. Delta squared over 2 equals c nu t plus some other constant I'll call b. But at t equals 0, delta must equal 0. Since nothing has happened yet, there's been no diffusion. Therefore, b must be 0. Thus, delta is the square root of 2c nu t. This is very significant. We haven't even solved the equation yet, but we know that the velocity profiles, as they grow with time, grow like the square root of time and the square root of kinematic viscosity nu. In other words, delta is proportional to the square root of nu t. But what is constant c? Well, it's somewhat arbitrary, but it will depend on how we choose to define our delta. So c depends on the definition of delta. For example, we can define delta as the height where u over capital U is 0.01 or 1% or 5%, etc. Once we have the solution, we could go back and figure out what c will correspond to one of these definitions. For now, let's just leave c in as an arbitrary constant. Now let's look at the other equation, the right-hand side of the equation above where we separated variables. And let's rewrite this as d squared f d eta squared equal negative c eta d f d eta. I'll call this equation 3. Before we attempt to solve this equation, we ask ourselves, has similarity been achieved? Well, we started with our equation in physical variables, which is a PDE, where u is a function of both y and t. And now we have equation 3, which is an ODE, with f equal f of eta only. So we have reduced the number of independent variables from y and t to eta, or from 2 to 1. So we reduced the number of independent variables by 1 from 2, y and t in physical variables, to 1, eta, our similarity variable. So by our original definition of similarity solutions, we've achieved similarity, at least in terms of the equation. But sir, equation 3 is second order, so that means we need two boundary conditions. But in the original problem, we have three boundary conditions. Great observation, BJ. We cannot claim to have achieved similarity unless the boundary conditions also transform properly. So let's look at the boundary conditions. In physical variables, we needed three boundary conditions, which were u equal capital U at y equals 0, u equals 0 at y equal infinity, and u equals 0 at t equals 0. Now in similarity variables from equation 3, we need only two boundary conditions as BJ noticed since it's a second order ODE. This is where the similarity argument can break down. Now we have to transform these boundary conditions into our similarity variables. And if everything works out, two of them will merge into one so that three boundary conditions become two boundary conditions. If this doesn't work, our similarity solution has failed. So let's check this out. At y equals zero, u equal capital U, and since f is u over capital U, and eta is y over delta, this boundary condition becomes f at eta equals 0 equal capital U over capital U, or 1. At y equal infinity, u equals 0, and thus f of infinity, since eta becomes infinity when y is infinity, is equal to 0 since u is 0. This is our second boundary condition, which is all we need, by the way, to solve the equation. But what about this third boundary condition? At t equals 0, u is 0, and eta is y over 0, which goes to infinity since we can analyze eta at any y. And when u is 0, f is 0. Thus, f of infinity is equal to 0. And fortunately, these two boundary conditions match. Thus, since we reduced the number of independent variables by 1, and the boundary conditions went from 3 to 2 without any conflict, we've met all the conditions for similarity. So we have achieved similarity. Next, we need to solve this equation with boundary conditions f of 0 equal 1 and f of infinity equals 0. 
this will do in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.